And here we are at FeeCon, and I am, I am having a really remarkable day. I knew when I came here that I was going to be surrounded by wonderful people, and uh, this, this lovely young lady came by our booth and said hello, and as I'm talking to her and looking at her name tag, I suddenly realized she is the author of one of the most impactful articles I've read within recent memory. I want to introduce you to Trisha Beck-Peter, and Trisha, thank you so much for stopping by to visit with us for a few minutes. Oh my gosh, it's my pleasure. Happy to have you here at FeeCon. Okay, now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to allude to your article a little bit later on as we talk, but you have a very interesting story about your personal journey and, and how you came to, uh, you, I know you're a provider for the Foundation for Economic Education, but tell us a little bit about your journey and how you became um, a powerful voice for freedom. Yes, okay, so I was a hardcore Keynesian leftist wannabe economic planner. I truly believe that because I was smart, it was my moral and civic duty to save the poor, stupid masses from themselves. I did not think that anyone else had the right or uh, the power to make decisions in their lives because, you know, we knew better. It was borderline fascist. It was terrible, rooted in a deep superiority complex. Um, uh, morally, I look back and I don't know how anyone can have a soul and believe the things that I believed at the time. Uh, but I really thought it was taking care of people to plan for them. And then I was on a plane to D.C. to do the Fund for American Studies internship, which I did not know was liberty leaning. And I read The Use of Knowledge in Society by Hayek and I Pencil by the founder of Fee, Leonard E. Reed. And uh, it was like light bulb, explosion, just life changing. The whole world fell apart beneath my feet. I couldn't make a pencil. I thought I could plan entire societies, entire economies. I thought I could tell people what to do, who to be, what to believe, who to vote for. And I couldn't make a pencil. And my arrogance started to just melt away around me. I, I didn't know where I belonged in the world anymore. I was going to go into the State Department. I was going to be a planner. What do you do when you find out you can't plan anymore and you spend your whole life trying to be a planner? It, it was terrifying. So I'm curious, how long did it take from the moment that light bulb went on to, uh, to where you became uh, an advocate for, for liberty and an advocate for the, the principles and practices that go along with it? So the light bulb went off almost three years ago to this day, um, June of 2015. And by September 2016, I was working at Fee. I was an intern at Fee. That's impressive. Um, yeah, no, it was an insane journey. Uh, I had a mentor, Dr. Nikolai Wenzel at Flagler College. He's no longer there. He's somewhere, but he'll see this. Hi, Nikolai. Um, and he, uh, he kind of changed my life. And he got me reading Hayek and Mises and Buchanan and um, just really driving into the Austrian school. Um, I studied public choice. I had always been an econ nerd. I'd loved economics since I was 14 years old. Um, but when I found the free market economics um, and the accompanying classical liberal philosophy, it was, a, it was a right down the rabbit hole. I love it. I, I love to hear stories like this because every one of us is a, is a work in progress. And, you know, sometimes it's tempting to get impatient with people who aren't as far along as we are in the journey. And it just helps to remember we're all slogging our way out of this swamp of misinformation and we have to be patient. But right now, there is a huge tendency through American society to, to want to control other people's lives. And, and school shootings are one of the reasons, you know, or at least the, the, the news reporting on it. You wrote this brilliant article about how character rather than control is the more effective way to shape a society. And let's, let's talk a little bit about some of the conclusions that, that you came to. Okay, I have to be honest. I thought we were going to talk about a different article, but um, that's fine. <laughs> I thought we were talking about my free speech article. But uh, character and control... How many people watch this? Oh, I don't know. What do we think? Three, four million? No, I, I don't know. We... If it's a smaller thing, I can be a little bit more vulnerable right now. So um, I have a 14-year-old brother, and he is in a dark place right now. And I, I was trying to think of what do you say to a young man whose soul is in danger, who... who's in danger of giving in to the violence and darkness of the human spirit, that darkest element. What did I want him to know? I wanted him to know that he was the decision maker in his life. It was his character that was going to get him out of this mess or keep him in it. 
he was going to have to choose because no one could keep him from being violent. If he wanted to hurt people, if that's what he decided, he was going to be able to do it. There is no government body that can watch us at all times. There is nothing that constrain us from being violent, awful, terrible people, which we are all capable of. There is a darkness in the human spirit, in each human spirit. We are all capable of terrible, terrible things. And you think you're not. You think you're not. You don't want to think that you could commit a murder or a genocide or an atrocity like that, but you could. You have that ability. And the only thing constraining you from doing that, from lying, cheating, stealing, hurting, is your own character. And I was trying to find a way to get my little brother to see that. I wanted to find the right words for him in this dark time. It was, it was especially powerful to me because I'm, I'm a fan of Alexander Solzhenitsyn, who, yes. as, as he was in the, the gulag, um, the guy had a lot of profound thoughts. Apparently there's something about stripping away all the comforts of life that really t- tuned your antenna in. And, and one of the comments that he had made that I thought resonated with your point is that line that divides good from evil doesn't run between countries. It doesn't go between political parties. It runs directly through the center of every human heart. And that means each one of us consciously has to choose whether evil will come into the world through us or not. Oh, absolutely. Um, You know, I I didn't know about his work very much until I read Jordan B. Peterson's 12 Rules for Life. Uh, But there was a philosophy in my own heart and my own mind that I had been shaping for several years, especially after that collapse where um, when I decided that I didn't want to be a planner anymore, when I didn't want to be that arrogant, I realized I valued being the kindest person in a room more than the smartest. And that was harder for me. I was not initially a kind person or a warm person or a welcoming person. Um, But I had to make that choice. And I decided that if I was going to have people in my life, I had to choose to love them. Not just passively love them, not passively appreciate them. Choose to actively love them. Love as a verb. Love as a a commitment to the betterment of each human spirit. Um, Because that darkness, it does, it runs through each human heart and you get to decide how much of a hold it takes, but it's, it's scary. If you give the darkness an inch, it will take over the whole thing. It's, it's the worst creeping ivy in the world. It will choke out all the light in your heart if you give it an inch. And you have to be diligent. You have to fight against that darkness or you're not deliberately loving yourself. You're not giving yourself a chance to be a person you can live with. Tricia, you, um, I think you have some great insights to offer, and I want to direct our, our viewers to, uh, to read your work. This is Tricia Beck-Peter, and where can they find your work? Where's the, where's the best way to access it? You can find my work on fee.org. Um, I, I, you can Google me. I've done that a few times. It comes up, but most of my work is on fee.org. Okay. Anything else you'd like to share with our audience before we wrap things up? Uh, by the way, not just a fee writer, full-time fee employee. So I run the Fee Alumni Network and the Fee Campus Ambassador Program. So if you're interested in working with me on either of those, you can reach out to me. My email address is tbeck, T-B-E-C-K, at fee, F-E-E, dot O-R-G. Okay. So good talking with you. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you. We'll be back.